Good morning, students. Uh, let us start today a new chapter, the best Christmas present in the world, uh, written by Mikhail Marpugo. Mikhail Marpugo is a British writer, and this uh, particular story uh, is based on the war theme. Uh, we may also say uh, the theme of war and peace because uh, through this chapter, through this story, the writer. Uh, actually highlights the need of or the necessity of the peace instead of war. Uh, he talks of pacifism here, pacifism or pacifist, he believes in pacifist ideas, ideologies. What pacifism is that who does not believe in war. So war cannot be the solution of any kind of problem. Uh, so better uh, we have the other alternatives of uh, discussions, the open discussions, open discourse is also there. So that could solve the problem. So war that only brings the destruction and uh, it also destroys the humanity. Uh, the feeling of love, uh, it reduces. So uh, this is what the theme is. But let us discuss the theme uh, in detail after completion of the world toward explanation of this chapter. So let us go towards the chapter for world toward explanation. Uh, you may see in uh, the text of this story on your screen and while going through the text uh, you will have the explanation also so let us see uh, what is there uh, explained uh, and what is their uh, story described what is the story actually and <coughs> let us see it so the best christmas present in the world by Mikhail Marpugo. Uh, so let us start with the introduction that is given in the section before you read. Uh, there are some dates or periods of time in the history of the world that are so significant that everyone knows and remember them. Isn't it? In the history, certain dates are there that we can never forget. Taken the history of the India, we can never forget 15th August 1947. We can never forget 26th January 1950. We can also never forget, so there are many other dates uh, that we always celebrate and observe. Just uh, yesterday only we have celebrated uh, Kargil Vijay Divas. So these dates are very, very important in the history of India. Same is the case with the world. In the world history also, we could never forget some dates. This story you will read. Uh, is one such date and event a war between the british and the german in 1914. i hope that uh, you remember you know you know it what happened in 1914 what was the significance of this date what is the significance of this date in the history of the world yes you are correct this is the period when the first world war was going on so, the first world war period and uh, now in our story here, the story that we are going to study today uh, is uh, highlighting or is telling about the war that was fought in British and Germans. Not war, an incidence that happened in the war in 1914 between British and Germans. They were the enemies, they were fighting against each other. Now. Let us see some other dates that is uh, given here and what is their importance in a brief. Uh, first date is 4th July 1776. Uh, this uh, was the date uh, on which uh, America after the civil war uh, has declared uh, its independence. So this date is also important in the history of the world that it is the American declaration of independence on this date. Uh, let us come to the next date, 17th December 1903. On this date, uh, two persons, Wilbur and Orville Wright, Wilbur and Orville Wright, they made their first flight in the air and they remained there for 12 seconds in the air in the flight and they covered 120 feet. Isn't it ridiculous? It's funny one, no? 
if we take you uh, know today's situation for many um, you know days we can be in the flight for a long hour in the space ship we could go for even years we could be there in the space and if you take an example of air we also uh, air flight we can take fly aeroplane for hours for days but uh, this was begin this great achievement had begun had begun with a very very small step of this flight of 12 seconds covering only 120 feet by member and orbital right and this a small step has made a great achievement today see how a single small step could make a great difference this single step made a great difference in the history of the air flight this is because that this orville wright and wilbur could make their first flight for 12, 12 seconds we could be now in the air for a long time see the importance so this date also is very very important in the history of science, in the history of air, uh, 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 sorry, in the history of the aerospace. Okay, let us come to the next date, uh, 6th August 1945. Uh, this was one of the blackest day in the history of the world. Uh, by this uh, event, uh, the Second World War was finished when USA has dropped a nuclear bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So this day is known as Hiroshima Day, 6th August 1945. So uh, thousands of lakhs of millions of people actually they died. Even now also uh, the effect of this nuclear bomb uh, is past being past radio waves have been affected genetically the generations of the Japans and still we could see its bad effects on the Japanese people. So the blackest day ever 6th August 1945. Let us come to the next important day uh, in Indian history 30th January 1948 and this is the blackest one in the history of India. On this day, our Rashtrapita, father of our nation, Bapuji Mahatma Gandhi, was assassinated by an eccentric person, Mathuram Gose, on 13 January 1948. So, this event also we cannot forget. Uh, 15th April 1961 is another date which is important in human history. Uh, on this date, Yuri A. Gagarin, Yuri A. Gagarin has made uh, an orbit to the earth, a round one, a round travel to the earth. Yuri Gagarin, 20th July 1969 is another date. Uh, Neil Armstrong became the first human to set foot on the moon. See, all these are very, very significant dates. You should never forget. You know, going to stepping on the moon to make a first flight in the air, the blackest day like Hiroshima Day and the assassination of Mahatma Gandhi. American independence. So these are some dates that or those are very important. Now let us come to our uh, text, our story. What exactly here happened on this particular day? And the title of our story is the best Christmas present in the world. So Christmas is also there along with the war. Let us see what is the connection between Christmas is the Christmas and war. Let us see the first part. You could see the text on your screen. I spotted it in a junk shop in Bridport, a rolled top desk. Uh, spotted means here the meaning is given, saw it, found it. So, I uh, here this story is written uh, from the first person point of view, first person narration. Is, uh, <clears throat> the character from the story itself is narrating the story. Generally what happens you now when we read the story, when we 
hear the story. Uh, what kind of stories we have heard that once upon a time there was a king and he was having two wives and there was a something and something something means uh, the storyteller or the writer uh, is a third person and he is telling the story about somebody else but in case of here this kind of stories which is written uh, in a first person's point of view or first person narration in such kind of stories, the character from the story itself tells the story. Here, I, I means one of the character in the story. He is telling us that he is narrating the story. Let us see uh, what our narrator tells us. I spotted it in a junk shop in Bridport, a roll top desk. <coughs> Bridport. Uh, Bridport is a city uh, in England uh, in the region of Dorset. So, in England, we have a region, particular region called Dorset, and in, in that Dorset area, there is a big city, Bridport. Bridport. So, uh, here, the setting of our story, uh, at least in the first part, it is set in Bridport. So let us see what happened in Bridport. So the narrator is saying that I spotted it. And what did he spot? A roll top desk. Uh, the picture is given on your screen. This is the roll top desk. This kind of desk is called as a roll top desk. Means the top of the desk is a rolled one. So that is why a roll top desk. So I spotted, I found it. The narrator says that I found this roll top desk in a junk shop. I hope that you know what a junk shop is. Junk shop is a shop where uh, all the waste and useless material are uh, <coughs> sold one actually or collected one. Kabadi uh, You know you must understand. So when where such kind of all waste material is uh, collected and that shop is called a junk shop and the narrator is saying that I have found this roll top desk in a junk shop in Bridport. The man said it was early 19th century and oak. I had wanted one, but they were far too expensive. This one was in bad condition. The roll top in several pieces, one leg clumsily mended, scorch marks all down one side. So, uh, here when he went to the junk shop, the shopkeeper, the man, he said that this uh, particular furniture, there was, uh, there was a lot of furniture in his uh, shop and he said that this all furniture was of 19th century, the old one, 19th century, early 19th century uh, and it is made up of oak. I had wanted one. I, the narrator here wanted to have one of the furniture, this roll top desk, one of it. But he also said that they were far too expensive. But you know, the furniture, those are antique one. Antique means uh, from the ancient time or from the earlier time, which has uh, which has got a historical importance. And oak is the wood. Oak, no? Oak is. Uh, I hope that you know the oak, oak is a tree, oak tree and this uh, wood of this oak tree is uh, considered as one of the best quality wood <coughs> in the world. So here it is made up of oak first and uh, of early 19th century that is why all this furniture was very very expensive. Antique pieces are always you know uh, sold. Uh, expense because it has got historically uh, significant importance and uh, little art is also there so uh, the furniture was expensive but this was in bad condition this rolled out desk the, the rolled out desk the writer is talking about it was in bad condition and uh, it was in bad condition and the roll top that was in several pieces it was the damaged one and one of its leg was clumsily mended clumsily uh, mended means repair mended 
you can uh, note down the words uh, uh, in your notebooks while watching this video. So clumsily means not skillfully and mended means repaired. Leg was repaired, it was damaged one but it was repaired but not skillfully repaired. So clumsily repaired, not skillfully repaired, uh, roughly uh, you may say uh, repaired. So uh, this uh, scorch marks all down one side, scorch marks is burn marks. Burn mass means this uh, some uh, part of it was burned, one side of it was burned. So the scorch marks were also there on this uh, desk, not completely burned, but marks of burning were, were there. Uh, it was uh, going very uh, for very little money. So because it was damaged one, because it was having the burn marks and it was repaired one, so it was in bad condition, and that is why this particular old desk was. Uh, being sold for very little money. I thought I could restore it. Restore means again repair. Uh, it would be a risk, a challenge, but I had to have it. I paid the man and brought it back to my workroom at the back of the garage. I began work on it on Christmas Eve. So, finally, Though it was difficult to repair this roll top base, the writer for that he could repair it and he brought this roll top base to the home and now he started repairing it in his garage. Garage is any kind of workshop where repairing work goes on. So these uh, words now are not down the words, words are very important. The vocabulary is one of the you know the best uh, way that we should learn <clears throat> if we don't have the vocabulary I, it becomes always problem for communication so we should have the vocabulary so the words that uh, today uh, in this particular paragraph we have seen the junk small we have seen the spot aid scorch mask throw top base uh, restore and the garage so garage is actually what we you know sometimes generalize it. Garage means where the repairing of the vehicles uh, goes on. This is what we know about the garage. But garage is actually any kind of workshop where any kind of repairing goes. So let us go to the next part. And uh, in the last sentence, he said that it was Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve means one day before the Christmas. So it was Christmas uh, is brought here and uh, the best Christmas for them in the world. Let us see the connection between Christmas and why. I removed the roll top completely and pulled out the drawers. So the upper part of the roll top desk. Roll top. He removed the roll top completely. So upper part of the desk he had taken it out to repair it. And he pulled out the drawers of the, those desks. Uh, the veneer had lifted almost everywhere. Veneer, the meaning is given on your book, on, it is on your screen also. A thin layer of plastic or decorative wood on the furniture of the cheap wood. So kind of sunmica we say, no? sunmica. So such kind of plastic, uh, that is called as veneer. And everywhere this veneer was almost lifted. Lifted means uh, came out. The sunmica came out. The veneer came out. Let us go further. Uh, it looked like water damage to me. Both fire and water had clearly taken their toll on this desk. So this desk was damaged by fire as well as water. So, in the beginning only he had seen that the scorch mass, uh, scorch marks were there, burn marks were there and now when he saw the veneer, lifted veneer, uh, so he understood, understood that it was the water damage. So, both fire and water has taken their toll on this desk, taken their toll on the desk. Taking the toll means damaging, the meaning is in your uh, book also you could see on your screen also so taken on their toe is damaged so the last drawer was stuck fast 
I tried all I could to ease it out gently. In the end, I used brute force. So the last dharwa that was stuck fast, it was stuck fast, it shut very tight, it was not open. So with gentle force. So finally, he tried all the ways to take out gently without any damage. But finally, he has to use the brute force. Brute force means very strong and rough without thinking whether it will damage or not. Without logic, he applied all his force roughly and strongly and he withdrew that travel, the last travel. So I struck it sharply with the side of my fist and the travel flew open to reveal a shallow space underneath a secret house. So when he opened it, so he flew it open, the travel opened it and in the shallow space of that travel, shallow is narrow one, which is not much deeper. Deeper means Hejana. So not much deeper, shallow. Uh, underneath there was a secret drawer. A secret drawer was there. <coughs> now let us uh, see uh, suspense game here. Secret drawer. So there was something in there. I reached in and took out a small black tin box. So what was there? There was a small black tin box. It was a tin box and a black color box and small one. Small black tin box. Cello taped to the top of it was a piece of lined notepaper and written on it in shaky handwriting. Jean's last letter received January 25th, 1915 to be buried with me when the time and on that black box there was a paper and that paper was cello taped cello tape means a paper was kept on the box and it was covered with the cello tape so it could be a seen transparent tape and that is why what is written on that paper that small piece of paper we could read it and that uh, because of cell type, it will be stuck fast to that tin box always. So, on that paper, what was the written? Uh, it was written, Jean's last letter. Whose letter? Jean's. Jean's last letter and received. On which day it was received? January 25th, 1950. Can you tell me what is the importance of this date? Okay, no, leave the day, uh, year only, January 25th. Yes, it is Christmas. Christmas falls on January 25th always. So, it was Christmas day. On that day, it was received. So, a letter is there inside the box as it is uh, written on the paper. And this letter was received on January 25th, 1915. In the introduction, we have seen that uh, the story is about the war between British and German that had taken in 1940 and here later received in 15. Let us see what is the connection of these dates. And not only that, a note is also written there uh, with this paper. Uh, it is written to be buried me with me to be buried with me when the time comes this creates a great suspense isn't it this letter is such an important thing that this the person who had received this letter doesn't want to reveal it at all what was there in the written what was there in the letter written such a secret letter such a, you know such an important that you know, nobody should know it and it should be buried. Nobody could see it when the time comes. So, it is clearly mentioned that it is expected that this letter should not be seen by anybody. It is top secret and it should be buried when the person dies. Which person dies? Whoever this letter received. Later, this may be received. Yeah, the letter. 
त्या पर्सन सोबत ते बळी करायचा आहे त्याला तू राहायचा आहे सो दिस लेटर शुड बी पर्ट क्लिअरली रिटर्न ऑन द पेपर सो दॅट सपोज इवन इफ समबडी नो दिस लेटर इज लॉस्ट अँड समबडी एल्स वुड गेट यू सो ही शुड नॉट ओपन इट अँड इट इज मीन टू बी केप सिक्रेट आय न्यू ॲज आय डिट इट that it was wrong of me to open the box and yes when it is clearly mentioned on the box that it should be kept secret and buried and should not be read so uh, he knew the narrator knew that he was wrong of opening the box it was not supposed to open but he was opening but curiosity got the better of my scruples so he just threw it what could be such kind of later that need to be buried what kind of secret what secret should would be there uh, so there, he was very curious to know it and even if you might also be getting very curious to know that what is there in the later so this feeling is called as scruples scruples so feeling that make you hesitate to do something wrong scruples means whether now the letter is and is very curious to open that letter but letter is not mean to open it but uh, and uh, if you open it it is wrong so he hesitated yeah the narrator hesitated to open the wrong this feeling of hesitation is called as scruples but uh, this feeling is taken over was defeated by the feeling of curiosity so finally he opened the box inside the box there was an envelope let's see the next para inside the box there was an envelope and the address read on that envelope the address read mrs jim mac person so who the letter was written mrs jeans mac person is the person mrs it was a lady and jim is a male name actually jim is not the female a lady's name as a name of male jim is generally given to the boys okay so mrs jim mac person is mrs J- the wife of jim mac person and whose letter it was james letter james last letter on the paper no that paper on the box that was yellow type there it was it james last letter and to whom it was written mrs jim mac person address is also there at 12 copper beaches bridport dorset so the same city where he had found that furniture where he had found that roll top desk so 12 copper bridges bridport dorset i took out the letter and unfolded it so he opened it to read it it was written in pencil and dated at the top december 26 uh, 1940 1941 so on which date it was written December 26 1914 this was the date on which date it was received january 25th 1915 uh, nearly one month later december 26 1914 it was written and it was received on january 25th 1915 so on so i just mentioned that uh, January 25th is a Christmas day actually December 25th is a Christmas day okay uh, make it correct please <coughs> so December 26th on the next day of the Christmas uh, this letter was written let us go further and this, uh, this is the letter that is we are going to read uh, uh, further uh, dearest Connie Connie is the name of James wife 
Mrs. McPherson. Mrs. June McPherson. Uh, in this male dominated society, uh, generally wives are named after their husbands. You know, as we have uh, here that you know, suppose uh, Kadam. Kadam is the surname. Suppose okay. So the Mr. Kadam and Mrs. Kadam. Isn't it? Named after the male. So here, dearest Connie is with her first name, James Mary's first name. So dearest Connie. I write to you in much happier frame of mind. I write to you in a much happier frame of mind. See, how to start writing a letter, that's a big problem for our students. So how Jim is writing, how beautifully he started that I write to you. I'm writing this letter in a such much happier frame of mind. I'm very happy to write this letter he said. Happier frame of mind. Uh, remember this expression, you could also use some time in, in write, writing a letter or uh, you know, writing letter nowadays is and it should disappear. But you could uh, write such kind of uh, letter in an exam also. So this could be useful to you. So I write uh, to you in much happier frame of mind because something wonderful has just happened. So something very wonderful is uh, now going to tell to the Pony. Let us see. Uh, that I must tell you about at once. We were all standing to in our trenches yesterday morning, Christmas morning. So he is telling an event um, of the Christmas morning, on the Christmas day, something happened. It was crisp and quite all about. As beautiful as a morning as I have ever seen, as cold and frosty as a Christmas morning should so the morning it was it was crisp and quiet so crisp means uh, kind of a uh, little hot one and even frosty also cold one also so open sky and uh, frosty also fresh one crisp and quiet means fresh and very pleasant morning as every christmas morning should be so it was very fresh morning and they were standing in their trenches. Uh, trenches, uh, trenches. Uh, let us see here. Uh, you can see on your screen the picture of trench. Uh, here, the soldiers are there uh, with their gun, and this uh, dug or land where they hide themselves. Uh, hide, uh, war is going on. And from that trenches, they fight the enemy, they shoot. So these places are called as trenches, long deep ditches in the ground where soldiers hide from the enemy. So they were standing in their trenches, it was a Christmas morning. And let us see the next para. I should like to be able to tell you that we began it. But the truth, I am ashamed to say, is that fizz began it? See, uh, read these sentences, two sentences very carefully. So, this is how our feelings could be written. I should like to be able to tell you that we began it. But the truth, I am ashamed to say, is the truth is that fizz began it. What is the truth? Fizz began it. And Chris, what is fizz? Fizz. You will see the meaning on your textbook. A name for German soldier, a common German name, generally is very common. Tom and Tom, Dick and Harry are the English names, British names. So the same way, Fritz is the very common German name. As we have here in India, very common name is Raja. Isn't it? Raja, Rani. Isn't it? So common names. So here, Fritz means here Germans. So what writer, narrator is saying, you know, he said that I should like to be able to tell you that we began it. He had the feeling, the writer, the narrator had the feeling that uh, it should be uh, said that they began it. So they should have, he felt that instead of these German people, they should have begun it. They should have started it. He felt that, he wished that he had done it sorry they had done it but unfortunately here is the truth is that 
it was not them it was the germans who began it and what they began let us see what they began first someone saw a white flag waving from the tent case opposite then they were calling out to us from across no man's land happy christmas tommy happy christmas when we had got over surprises some of us shouted back same to you phrase same to you i thought that would be that or uh, we all did so what they began that one of the soldiers from the german side from the german trenches he waved the white flag white flag means a symbol of peace isn't it means no war so white flag so he was waving the white flag from the trenches and he also shouted that happy christmas tommy tommy is common name for uh, britishers so to the britishers the german soldiers wished happy christmas and the same way the britishers also had said that same to you friends it was christmas no see how strange it is they are on the battlefield the war was going on between british and the germans and on the day of christmas they are wishing each other happy christmas how could be that christmas happy when war is going on but they they felt that they should celebrate this christmas and that is why they wished that happy christmas and uh, the narrator here is said that and we thought that that is finished now they they wished britishers germans wished britishers and britishers wished them and that is over that is what we all did he said but then suddenly one of them was up there in his gray great coat and waving a white flag but uh, this was beyond his imagination that one of the soldier german soldier came up with the white flag with his gray great coat and waving it don't shoot lad someone shouted so someone from the british soldiers said that don't shoot he is showing white flag no so that is why don't shoot it is you know uh, out of uh, protocol the war protocol when the enemy is showing the white flag you should not have to shoot so don't shoot lad someone shouted and no one did no one shoot uh, then there was another fist came up uh, on the parapet and another keep your heads down i told the men it's a trick but it was not the narrator thought that it could be a trick so in war such kind of tricks would be always used so they thought that the germans were coming up with the white flag and they may shoot just by you know making an illusion that they were making the peace so uh, the one of uh, one after one the german soldiers were coming with the white flag the narrator he thought that it was a trick and he won his uh, phenomenon but it wasn't it was a trick he said and here the parapet is the word that is new word we could see here don't shoot someone shouted and no one did then there was another piece came up on the parapet parapet means actually here in the picture you could see the parapet uh, fencing that is made just above the trenches <coughs> so the parapet so they came up and showing the white flags uh, one of the german was waving a bottle above his head a bottle was there on his uh, head one of one of the soldier it's a christmas day tommy we have snacks we have sausage we meet you yes yes we meet you actually the question is asking we meet you yes we want to celebrate the christmas you mean to say so champagne and uh, shams and sausage was there with them so by this time there were dozens of them walking around us across no man land and not a rifle between them so without weapon without gun without rifle they were walking dozens of german uh, soldiers they were coming with the bottles snaps and sausage in their hand to celebrate christmas a little private morris was the first up and one of uh, his uh, fellow soldier the writer sparrow soldiers he also is saying that come on boys what are we waiting for then 
there was no stopping point. I was the officer. So the narrator was the leader, commander, officer uh, who was leading this troop of British soldiers. And he was the officer there. And there was no stopping them. Means the Germans came and even the British started going there to celebrate the Christmas. But the truth is that, so what he said that I was the officer. I should have stopped them there and then. Actually, this is completely out of war protocol. How could we celebrate uh, the Christmas with enemy on the battlefield itself when the live war was going on? Isn't it out of imagination? The people with their gun, they are shooting each other and they were um, killing each other. Now the same soldier, they are celebrating Christmas with one another. One another. Very strange. And this is very, uh, you know, unimaginable, out of protocol also. So as an officer, uh, he said, the narrator said, as an officer, he should stop them because this uh, kind of uh, uh, celebration is not allowed at the time of war. As an officer, he should stop them. But what he said that, I, I was officer, I should have stopped them there and then. I suppose, but the truth is that I never even, uh, it never even occurred to me, I should. And at that time, uh, he never thought to stop them. Now, while writing the letter, he is thinking that he should have stopped them. But at that time, this idea didn't come in his mind. So, all along their line and us, I could see men walking slowly towards one another. Grey coats, khaki coats meeting in the middle. Grey coats are the coats of the Germans and khaki coats are the uh, of course of Britishers. So they meet in the middle in no man's land. No man's land means area between two opposite uh, army where battle uh, is going on, where war is going on. So in the no man's land they were uh, meeting and I was one of them. I was the part of this. In the middle of the war, we were making peace. See, the soldiers who were fighting war, they were making peace on right on the battlefield. So this is what is a very basic instinct of human being. Nobody wants violence. Nobody wants killing. Nobody wants bloodshed. A human being is basically a peace lover, and here is the best example we could see that the, the worst enemy in the First World War, the Britishers and the Germans, they were making not you know the citizens, the soldiers on the battlefield, they were making peace on the battlefield on the day of. Christmas. Um, dear students, uh, we will stop here. The next part of the letter we will study in the next video. Uh, till then, we will stop here. Uh, you thoroughly, once again, if possible, go to the video, uh, video and note down the important points. And we will see you tomorrow. Till then, uh, have a nice day.